welcome to week eight of um, modalities movement therapy. We are going to be working and looking at the spiral line of the body today. And for the releases, you're going to need your foam roller and you're going to need a high density foam peanut. If you don't have a high density foam peanut, you can take two tennis balls inside a sock and just securely fasten that sock so you're keeping the tennis balls closely together. When we look at the spiral line of the body and how it crosses over and we need to make use of this spiral line to get into rotational movements, it also runs down the lateral part of the leg around the sides and in to the arch of the foot. So it almost creates a, like a hammock under the arch of the foot and comes up the side of the leg. We're going to release the, this line of the body with the foam roller and the peanut. And then we're going to work into those rotational movements. So life happens in rotation. So we need to be able to um, move into these positions. If you have an injury and you, injure, and you err on the side of caution, not moving into these positions, just working forward and sideways and not bringing those movements into a nice, in a nice controlled manner into everyday living, then your risk of injury is going to be greater. You need to prepare the body because life happens in rotations. Sometimes you need to all of a sudden turn around. Say you're driving your car, you need to suddenly turn around. Your body needs to be prepared for those kind of movements. So if you're going to stop moving into those rotational movements because of an injury, then you're going to extend your possibility of injuring yourself further. So slowly and more controlled, releasing these lines of the body, plumping up the fascial tissue to support and strengthen everything surrounding those areas so that you can move into them if you suddenly need to be able to. Okay, please don't forget your water and take either your tennis balls or the high density foam peanut and bring the peanut into the arch of the foot. So one ball of the peanut into the arch of the foot and the lateral part of the foot into the center of the peanut. So move nice and slowly forward and back. And then you can also keep moving the foot around, just rolling it around. Rolling it. Change the position of the foot. Keep going. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Roll it out. You need to push quite deep into the peanut just to keep it from moving around of its own accord. So you need to control it, rotate it around the foot and bring it into the arch of the foot and seesaw forward and back, forward and back. And again, keep moving, keep changing the position of the foot on the peanut. Five and four, three, two and one. Okay, just put the peanut to one side and I want you just to stand there. You're going to bring, keep one foot pointing forward and the other foot just turn it out and I want you to pinch the mat with the ball of the foot and the toes. Lift up the arch of the foot. So this is a great one for strengthening the arch of the foot. If you have a towel, then you can pinch the towel between the toes and the ball of the foot. So you want to strengthen those muscles in the toes and the foot. You want to work the arch of the foot. Let's do the same thing to the other side. So last week, week seven, we did our toe crawls forward. So this is the same movement. 
you're just concentrating on one foot at a time in this position. Pull the arch of the foot up, work into the arch of the foot. Keep going, do another seven. Pinch and pull, four more, and three, and two, and one. Just standing with the feet parallel, I want you just to keep the toes on the mat, but lift the heel and give it a big circle. Let's change direction. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Nice big circle. And when you're ready, just change direction up and around. So loosening up in the hip, in the ankle, and in the knee. Remember again, fascially, we all connected. Four, three, two, and one. Good, and just shake everything out. Okay, we're now going to come onto the mat in a seated position, and we're going to come into our knee box position. So we're going to rotate onto one side and you're going to bring the ankle onto the peanut. Push into the ankle. So you're going to sandwich the ankle between the peanut and the ball of the foot. Keep circling that ankle. Nice big movement. So try to drop the knee down and then you should be able to get more movement from the foot. Change direction. Keep sandwiching it between the ball of the, between the peanut and the hand. Let's continue moving up that lateral side. So you're going to roll and push into the knee. You can lift the foot if you need to and roll along there. Nice and slowly move up and down that lateral line. Okay, from there, bring the peanut underneath the knee and just move the peanut around, pushing in with the hand. Move it around, move it around. We're now going to bring the peanut up the lateral part of the leg and you can either, if it's very tender, you see so forward and back. Otherwise, you're going to lift up and you're going to roll. If you're not comfortable in this position, you can bring your foot flat, you can extend your leg out and roll. Keep going, rolling along. Do another four. Okay, I still want you to work some more into the lateral part of that same leg. This time you're going to lie on your side. You can bend both knees, the top foot is flat. You're going to bring the peanut and you're going to need to adjust that leg. And I want you just to roll slowly at the top of the ITB. Just nice, slow and gentle movement. We don't want to overdo this release because some, it's quite neural around this area. So just take a nice and slow five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Still on that buttock on that side you're going to release the glutes there. Let's keep the feet flat, the knees bent and you're rolling across that side of the body. Adjust the peanut if you need to or want to feel it. You can drop the knee out. Four more, three, two, and one. Let's go over to the other side. 
So you're going to be in that knee box position, peanut underneath the ankle, and sandwich that ankle between the peanut and the hand, and draw that circle. Drop the knee so you get more movement in the foot. Let's change direction of that circle. Keep going, four more, three, two, and one. Good, reposition the pinup up the lateral part of the leg, and you're going to roll from the ankle all the way up to the knee. So move that ball, move that peanut all the way up. another two and another one good bringing the peanut onto the knee and move it around find those trigger points that need your attention that need releasing once you found it hold it there bounce are you lifting up and sitting tall any strain in that hip you're going to bring the foot flat or extend the leg out to the side. Hopefully because we've released those glutes already, you should be able to sit comfortably in this position. Let's bring the peanut up the lateral part of the leg and you're going to roll along or you can see so if there's a lot of tension there. Good, let's roll. So you're right up at the top of the glutes, well on the lateral part of the leg but close to the top. And let's lie on our side, you're going to extend, bring the top foot there, you can extend the bottom leg or keep it bent and then I want you just to work into that lateral side there. You can open up that top shoulder, the other thing you could do is bring your foot feet flat and you're massaging around that little area there. Not too much, because we don't want to overdo due to the very neural releases that it is. And we're gonna take the peanut out, sit on the peanut and give the glutes a release there. Keep going, do another four, and three, and two, and one. Good. Stop and have a drink of water. We're now going to work into the lower back, and then we're going to work our way up. Last week we worked our way from the neck, or the head, should I say, and all the way down. Bring your foam roller just above the mat. We're going to use it just now. Let's start lying on our back with feet flat. We're now going to work up and down the spine. You know this is part of your spiral line. So just onto the lower back, releasing those erector spinae muscles on either side of the spine. So you should be able to move the peanut up and down slightly. So you're breathing into this position and arching the back. On your exhalation, push into the peanut and tuck and tilt your pelvis. So this is where you're going to feel your weight getting lighter. So you're pushing more weight into the peanut, you're tucking and tilting. And that peanut is in line with the hip bones. Breathe in an arch. And then exhale. So let your movement follow your breath. Open up and create space. Then you're breathing into that space you're creating. 
exhale and tuck. So it's a nice slow and steady breath. Not a quick one, a gentle, slow, steady breath for about four counts in. And exhaling for four. See if you can exhale for a little bit longer. So inhaling four and exhaling for about six counts. Let's do another two. Open up and breathe into that space you're creating. And exhale. And tuck. Finish off with one more. Breathing in. Opening up. And exhaling, push, tuck, and tilt. Good, release the peanut. We're now going to the position the peanut on the occiput ridge. And you want to find that mastoid process behind the ear. So you're going to shear the head from side to side. So you may maintain contact with the peanut throughout, shearing side to side. So bring the peanut right on to the mastoid process behind the ear and then over to the other one. Now just hold on the one side and I want you to nod your chin up and down. You can bring the peanut, keep holding on to it and bring the peanut a little bit lower down and then you can shear a little bit from side to side, even moving it down a little bit more. Move it over to the other side and again Drop the peanut, play around with the position of the peanut. Share side to side and move up and down. Move the peanut a little bit lower so you sort of right at the below the occiput ridge. So the peanut will fit between the occiput ridge and the bulge in the neck there where we often carry a lot of tension. Shear from side to side. Just a small little movement. Nod the head up and down and again shear side to side. We're now going to rock onto one side and we're going to release the triceps. So we want to engage the back arm line for the, the, some of the releases we're going to do. Rest your head in your hand and you're going to roll opening up. So try and line the fingers up with your neck. So you're getting into that extension and lengthening out. So be careful that the elbow is not too far forward and your hands rotated. You want to keep the peanut in line with the body. Just keep going into that position. So keep the peanut Again, you need, it needs to cooperate, so you're going to need to line yourself up properly so that it stays there and put enough weight into it. If this is a very tender position and area for you to release, you can, option two is use the foam roller. Bring the peanut onto the shoulder blade there, right at the base of the armpit. You're going to drop your ear onto your arm and you're going to just maybe take your hand onto the roller and just let your head rest there and rock up and down. At the same time, you can open up slightly. So adjust the peanut slightly back. So working around the shoulder blade. Rock up and down. You can also rock forward and back a little bit and increase that release, just rocking back and forth, Five, four, three, two, and one, good, nice. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Oops. Bring the peanut onto your triceps, bring the roller with you because you're going to need it in a minute. And let's start off lining the fingers up with the neck and just roll along the triceps. So use a foam roller. If it is very tender and it's causing you to hold your breath because of the, um, the neural pathways that we're working along. Remember, there are 10 times more neural pathways in your fascial tissue. 
So the last thing you want to do is to make, is to release something that is incredibly tense and that's causing you to hold your breath because we're looking at the autonomic nervous system when we're breathing. The autonomic nervous system made up of parasympathetic where we use our diaphragm for breathing and our sympathetic where we in that flight and fight response. We don't want to be in that fight and flight response because we're producing too much cortisol and that's not healthy for the body apart from all the muscles that we are um, creating a lot of tension for and not stimulating the diaphragm. There we go, let's release the peanut. Oh, actually don't release it yet. Bring it onto the shoulder blade. Rest your wrist on your roller. Open yourself up a little bit more. So you wanna really get into those releases. So again, if this is incredibly sore for you, if it's very painful, a little bit of discomfort we want to work through, but if there's too much pain involved, you bring the foam roller and you rest it there. Keep your head in your hand or you can rest your ear on your arm and you can rock back and forth on the foam roller. So a little bit less, um, you know, not getting as quite as deep, but still releasing into that area. You continue moving and working on your breathing because we want to take ourselves into a rest and digest pattern, stimulating the diaphragm and the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, release it. Our next one is also optional. I'm going to show you option one first and then option two without the peanut. So you're going to bring the peanut onto the rhomboids. So those rhomboids are the muscles that retract the shoulder blades. So lie back and position your head on the foam roller. So you're supporting the neck. You're going to feel a lot of clicking in the shoulder if you've got any rotation, rotational cuff issues. If you want to keep the hands there, that's going to help you release more. But if it's very um, tender and there's any pain involved there, you bring the hands next to you, the ears on the foam roller, or better yet, you bring the hands onto the chest and you're breathing into arch and you're breathing out to tuck. So as you breathe in, the peanuts should be rolling up. As you exhale, the peanuts coming down. And like I mentioned, you're going to feel clicking in the front of the shoulder because we're releasing part of the rotator cuff as well. Hold onto the roller if you can and breathe in and exhale and breathe in and exhale. We're going to keep going, breathing in nice and slowly, not a quick sudden breath, a nice slow and steady breath. We're going to do another four, breathing in and exhale and three and exhale. Two more and exhale. And your second option, which I forgot to show you, is with your back, your shoulder blades on the roller, breathing into arch and exhaling to tuck. So breathing into arch and exhaling to tuck. Okay, if we can just do another two if you're using the peanut. And exhale. And one more. And exhale. Lift your tailbone off the mat and you're going to roll along the shoulder blades. 
If you want to go onto one shoulder blade, bring your elbows together, create a hammock for your head, roll up and down, move over to the other side. And when you're ready, you come back to center and roll it quite low down, feet open. Let's just bounce into that open chest position and exhale. Just a little bit of shearing now, and I want you to shear over the shoulder blades. So we did shearing over the rib cage last week. We're gonna get into that now. So you should feel your roller moving up slightly. And then when it's too high, you're going to bring it down. And again, just shear over the shoulder blades. So you're moving into a side bend from side to side. Feel the roller moving up, move it down as and when you need to. And you're going to keep going here. Okay, take it back. So you're going to bring the elbows onto the roller and let's do the same thing we did last week. So shearing. And like I said, the fascial tissue comes around the rib cage into a spiral across in the front. So let's loosen up around here and rock to the front like we did last week. And you're shearing over the rib cage loosening up those intercostal muscles that are attached to the diaphragm. So the more we release those intercostal muscles, the fascia there, the more our diaphragm is going to work more efficiently. Let's do the same thing to the other side. So you've done the back, move around onto the other side and share across there. Share over the back and around to the side. Four more. Three, two, and one. Okay, put the foam roller to the side for now. Have a drink of water. Okay, so from that position, we're now going to lie flat on the mat and we're going to start working into some rotational movements. Let's bring ourselves into, if you want to call it a star shape position and using our breath, so our movement's going to follow our breath, we're breathing in, so we're opening up now, we're creating space, we want to breathe into that space. And I want you to open up around the diaphragm so you're going to breathe into your arch position. On your exhalation, you're going to slide the feet towards you and bring the elbows down. So we're exhaling and contracting, activating those glutes that we've released. Now we're going to rock the knees away to one side. So we're going to drop onto the, in the side of the leg and you're going to push into that same elbow to the direction you're going. You're going to push up onto the hand and you're going to reach up into that lifted position. I'm going to give you another option here. This is your option one. If you want to take a little bit further, you breathe in and lift up there. Now you're exhaling, drop down onto your back again. So you're in the tuck position where we started on our back and then you're going to lengthen. Breathe in again and extend up. Then exhale. So let your chin move with the, the exhalation. Your chin should lift. Now we're going to breathe in and you're going to rotate the other way. So you're going to drop the knees and come onto the elbow. Push up onto the hand and you can just lift the arm up. If you want to take it a little bit further, you reach up and over into that rotation and then exhale, exhaling down, exhaling into that tuck position, bring your hand back onto the floor next to the mat and ready to breathe in. 
lengthen out. So nice, slow and steady movements, really focusing on the breath. Exhaling to tuck. Rock over to the other side, drop the knees, push into the elbow. Now you're breathing in to that lifted position. Push up if you want to. And now you're going to exhale again. So we want to focus longer on the exhalation. Lower down, lower down. And exhale to tuck. Breathe in again. Open up. Now exhale, tuck. Round and bring yourself into that tuck position. Drop the knees over to the other side. Push onto the elbow and on into the knee box position. Breathe in or stay in knee box and reach up. Look at your hand. Rotate as much as you can. Exhaling back down into that rounded position. Exhale, exhale, exhale and open up. Now breathe in again. And exhale to tuck. Ready to go to the other side. Breathing in. Push onto the elbow, up onto the hand, and lift yourself up. Reach up and over. Look at your hand on the floor, and then exhale. Coming down into that tuck position. Nice control. We're going to do another four. Breathing in. Lengthen, stretch out. Now exhale to come. Ready to breathe in. Rock on to the side. Breathing in. Up onto the hand. Lifting up if you can. Look at that hand and reach the other arm into that rotation. And drop down. Exhaling to tuck. Ready for your inhalation. Breathe in. And exhale. Rock onto the other side. Breathing in. And lift. And exhale. And another two. Breathing in. And exhale. Ready to breathe in. And lift up into that inhalation. Opening up and exhaling. Nice and controlled. And last one. Breathing in. And exhaling. And breathing in and lift up and rotate, exhaling and breathing in, good, bend the knees and rock onto your side and around onto your hands and knees and let's just take an arch and an exhalation to tuck, round your spine and uncle. Okay, so we're going to come up to standing and I want you to really be aware of the way you come up off the mat. We're going to move into a lunge position and I want you to try and not to curl your toes under at the back. So you're going to Use a nice open posture so you're not rounding and you're not looking down. You need to look up so it's easier to engage your core muscles. And we're going to push onto that front leg and we're going to step. So I've got my left leg forward. I'm going to step my right foot forward as I come off the mat. Breathing in and I'm going to step like I'm about to walk and I'm going to bring myself into rotation. So the left foot is staying exactly where it is. My upper body is twisting towards my right foot. Now we're going to push back into the left heel and we're going to take the right foot up and we're going to step back. Now watch my legs. My knees are straight. My toes are pointing forward. Be careful that this is not happening. 
the left foot is staying exactly where it is the right foot again like we did in the lunge is lifting up left arm is coming forward like you're about to take a walk and you're going to step forward into that bringing rotation into that movement let's take it back again so it's like we're watching forwarding and rewinding a movie take it up and step forward rotate the upper body so think of that spine it's your axis you want to twist bringing rotation into our everyday living lift up and pull back again we're going to do another four lift up and breathe in rotate exhale and step back lift up and breathe in exhale and step back try and control it do another two breathing in and exhale and your last one breathing in and exhale let's take the right foot and keep the right foot exactly where it is let's start with the left leg back your left arm rotating the upper body towards your right foot and you're going to lift the left leg up change arms so opposite we're going to rotate towards the left side and step back reverse that movement toes off pointing forward watch that your left foot is not turning in or out okay let's keep going lift up control it so balance there feel the right foot working and step forward rotate the upper body then step back and reverse it look up posture is nice and lifted step in and breathe in and exhale take it back we're going to do another four maybe pick up the pace just a little bit and push back rotate twist and push back two more lift and walk and push back for the last one lift and twist and push back nice take a quick drink of water and then we're going to continue our spiral movement we're going to now take our feet nice and wide apart and we're going to work back into rotation let's twist to one side and reach the arm across the body and release same thing to the other side so currently you're pushing the hip back and you're reaching across and releasing okay breathe into the rotation so you're breathing into your lateral side so as you twist i want you to think of opening up breathing in and exhaling so you're breathing into your rotational position and exhale we're going to do another four maybe speed it up a little bit but let your movement or your breath follow your movement breathing in and exhale and two more and exhale one more and exhale now let's bring the hips into it so we're going to lift off the foot so you're moving away from the foot you're lifting the heel up and twisting into that and exhale come back breathing in rotation so even my arm the arm that i'm moving towards increase that rotation so you use that arm to help assist you retract the shoulder blade so you're pulling that arm and lifting off the heel and release okay that's four we're going to do another four breathing in nice slow steady breath and exhale three more breathing in 
and exhale. Let's do another two, breathing in and exhale. For the last one, breathing in and exhale. We're going to continue with that movement, but we're going to progress and we're going to add a squat into the center. So we're breathing in to that squat as you exhale. We're going to breathe a little bit differently, rotating. Breathing into your squat and exhaling to the other side. Here we go for three, breathing in. Make sure you're sitting back into your squat and your knees staying where they are. Exhaling, rotate that arm. Here we go for four, breathing in and exhaling. Another four, we're breathing into squat and exhaling, breathing in and exhaling. Here we go for another two, breathing in and exhaling. One more, breathing in and exhaling. Okay, have a drink of water. We're going to move into some lunges now. So we're going to do rotations closer towards the ground. So we're going to take the feet or we'll keep the feet where they are. Now we're going to take the opposite arm towards the opposite knee. So you're going to move the elbow to the knee and use that arm at the back to help you increase your rotation. Come back up into center. So breathe yourself into your lifted position and exhale as you go into that rotation. Okay, just hold it there and breathe in. And on your exhalation, take the other elbow to the knee. Twist and exhale, come Inhale to come up. Exhale, rotate to the first side. And exhale to come up. Here we go for four. Breathing out and breathing in. Do another four. Exhaling and inhaling. Three more. Exhaling and inhaling. Here we go for two more. Exhaling and inhaling. The last one. Exhaling and inhaling. Now like we did earlier, we progressed to add another movement. We're going to progress and add a curtsy lunge. So this is your inhalation when you're up. And you're going, we're going to twist to the first side. You're going to take that arm behind you. Now you're going to balance on that leg and you're going to bring the other foot into a curtsy lunge. So it's a nice challenge on the balance. Keep looking at that hand behind you. Step your foot out. Reach your arm across. Hold it in that position. Take your foot behind you. So as I said, it's a nice challenge on the balance. Now you're going to step that back foot to the side again. Go straight into your lunge. Change arms. And just let your breathing happen. So we're increasing the heart rate now. So try and control your breathing as best you can. But you might need to make sharp, shorter, sharper breaths. Just hold the position so you can just let yourself think about your breathing and ease into it. And let's step across, rotate, hold it for a few seconds and bring your foot behind you into that curtsy lunge. Hold it there, a nice tricky position. Focus on your breathing again. We're gonna do another four like this over to the other side. Reach that arm behind you, and when you're ready, step that foot back into your curtsy lunge. 
we got another two to go. Stepping across, reaching. Hold it and breathe. Step your foot behind you. Okay, if you're not into doing that curtsy lunge, you can just continue that rotation. You've always got that first option. Continue into the curtsy lunge if you can. And step across again. Reach around and step behind you into that curtsy lunge. Okay, so hold it in this position and lift your upper body up. So we're in a lunge position. And I want you to bounce into that lunge position for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Step across, back into your lunge, rotate. Bring your lengthened leg behind you so you're stepping back into your curtsy lunge and release the upper body. Rotate the feet, forward lunge, and bounce for two, three. Just let your breathing slow down and control it. And then shake the legs out. Let's give the quads a little bit of a release. So take your foam roller, maybe have a quick drink of water, I, was, I hope you felt it as challenging as I did. Put your water bottle to the side and let's bring those quads onto the foam roll. Nice and slowly. If you want to bring a little bit more into it, you can kick the feet to the tailbone, just increasing that release on the front of the legs. Three, two, and one. Good. Push back onto the elbows and knees. Let's take the hands onto the foam roller and just bounce the chest down to the mat. Take a deep breath in here. Nice and slow exhalation, tuck. And round the spine. Good, put the foam roller to the side again. On our hands and knees, we're now going to work from the upper body into some rotations. Let's take the right arm and we're going to reach that right arm up to the ceiling and you're going to bounce into that rotation. Breathe in for four counts. Now your exhalation, you're going to reach that arm through. You can rotate the supporting hand and bounce into that rotation. Let's continue the same side. We're breathing in and opening up. Now this is your first option. Again, if you can challenge yourself, and I'd like you to try, take that um, left leg, so you're using the right arm, the left leg will be extended to the side. So we're opening up to our inhalation. Then the exhalation, you're reaching through to the foot. Keep going. Let me just adjust this mic. And breathing in, opening up and exhaling, reach through, look underneath that armpit, opening up and exhaling. Let's do another four and exhaling. You do have the option of staying on both knees 
opening up and exhaling and there's one more to go breathing in and exhale good let's do the same thing to the other side so your left arm is moving now if you want to increase that range of movement in the body you're going to take your right foot out and you're going to reach that left arm up rotate into that open position adjust your supporting arm so the fingers are pointing towards that lifted arm bounce through breathe in again and exhale keep going take the knees on the mat if you need to and exhale what's nice about that foot extended you've got sort of a range of movement that you want to work towards you want to reach to that foot we're gonna do another four breathing in and exhale and again breathing in and exhale three to go and exhale another two and exhale for the last one and exhale come back onto the hands and knees and let's stay on the knees you can come up to standing if you're more comfortable we're going to take the arms and we're just going to stretch around the shoulder blades take your right arm bring your left arm and tuck it underneath if this is your range of movement there that's great if you can bring your hands your palms together so the right arm is on top I'm going to rotate towards the right side so I'm breathing in and opening up and exhaling back to center do come up to standing if you're more comfortable breathing in and exhaling keep going breathing in and exhaling here we go for four breathing in and exhaling and three more and exhaling another two and exhaling for the last one and exhaling good release and circle the shoulders up and back remember for as much movement we want and lengthening here we want the same here so take your right arm behind you and I want you to look over your right shoulder and again we're pulsing into a rotational movement so hold on to your wrist and you're bouncing into that rotational movement change the position of your hand if you want to and bounce around five four three two and one good let's do the same thing to the other side so let's start off with that rotational movement so my right hand is holding onto my left wrist feet are apart and let's bounce into that rotational movement for eight seven six five four three two and one good take the left hand and the left hand is going to be on top tuck the right arm underneath back of the hands together or the palms together now we're rotating over to the left side so you're breathing in and you're exhaling at the same time you might want to bring your elbows forward so you're pulling them forward and then rotating and then exhaling here we go for three breathing in and exhale five to go breathing in and exhale another four and exhale three more and 
and exhale. Last two. And exhale. One more. And exhale. Good. Release the arms. Circle the shoulders up and back. And just open up. Link the hands behind the back and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good. Let's release a little bit into the lateral side of the legs. So back onto your hands and knees. Take your right knee and bring it behind your left. I want you to feel that release in the lateral part of the leg. So you're going to bounce your bum back to your heels. If you're not feeling much, play around with the position of that top foot and continue bouncing back. Do another four, three, two, and one. Now wiggle the hips from side to side. Four, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Push yourself back onto your knees and change legs. So knees side by side, take the left leg behind, and now your right knee is coming off the mat. Bounce your bum back to your heels. Play around with the position of your foot. So again, you're bouncing into that stretch. And when you're ready for eight, we wiggle. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Onto the hands and knees. And tucking. Knees apart, feet together. Stretch yourself out into that lengthened position. Rest your forehead on the mat. And just coming into this position, focus on that diaphragmatic breathing. Breathing in for four and exhaling for six. If you are not comfortable and you can't reach the mat with your forehead, bring one hand or both hands under your forehead and relax into this position. What I want you to feel here is as you breathe in, your lungs are expanding, your diaphragm is pushing out, and you're releasing into that area around the lower back. Exhale. Another two. Take a nice deep breath in, nice slow, steady inhalation. And exhale. Finish off your last one with the inhalation as you uncurl through the spine, breathing in and circle the shoulders up and back. Swing your arms around your body and come up to standing and shake everything out. Well done and thank you for joining me.